Happy Sabbath to everyone. That sounded like you had some phlegm in your lungs. Happy Sabbath to everyone. I hope you're excited to be in church today. It's the house of the Lord expecting great blessings. Let's all stand to our feet as we transition to our divine worship experience. Come before his presence because we know that he is worthy.
Lord, today on this beautiful winter Sabbath, we come to worship you as our creator and sustainer. We're here today only on account of your grace and mercy, your providence, and your protection. We seek your pardon. We pursue your promises. We stretch our hands to you and led by the Holy Spirit, we bow in your divine presence with hearts of gratitude. Grateful that you have orchestrated this moment of submission and praise. Grateful that we have the assurance that even before we reach out to you, that you have a plan in place, tailor-made to fit our needs. Grateful for the assurance that you will never leave us nor forsake us. Grateful that your presence with us today is a reminder that Oakwood University was established to exalt the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. And so today, we lift our voices in praise to you for the ways in which you will fill each of our hearts with your divine love. Now, as we sing and pray, as we meditate on your word and respond to your message of love in this sacred space, may we experience peace, a peace that only you can give. In the name of our faithful Father, our loving Savior, and our forever comforter, amen.
Somebody say praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. I want to welcome you today to the Oakwood University Church. We have a number of announcements today, so I don't want to belabor the point. But I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord today. I don't know about you. Last Sabbath, it was very cold. But this morning, I walked out my house and I said to myself, I don't even know if I need my jacket. And you know, it's funny. It's about 40 degrees outside. It shows you the, the power of the body to adjust. Amen. And that's a word to a student out there who's saying, I don't know how I'm going to handle the 300 level classes or the 400 level classes, but the God that we serve has given us the ability to adjust. Amen. Amen. Uh, our pastor today is in the uh, sunny Los Angeles, California, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. But he has left us a message of greeting and welcome. So why don't you turn your eyes to the screen as we receive this greeting from Pastor Bird. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I regret that I cannot be with you in person today, but today I'm in Los Angeles, California, preaching at the Breath of Life Church in Los Angeles for Oakwood University Alumni Day for the Southeastern California and Southern California conferences. Today is a special day because number one, it's the Sabbath, and then number two, it's Oakwood University Day. church officers, and our members. We welcome you, our visitors, to this special day. We welcome Dr. Leslie Pollard, our university president, as he preaches God's word today, along with all of our Oakwood University administrators as they lead out in worship today. We'd also like to welcome the renowned Oakwood University Aeolians as they share their music ministry with us today. And then today, we're also excited to announce one of the great mothers of this church, Elder Lovey Verdun, is celebrating her 90th birthday today. Elder Verdun, thank you for your ministry to the Oakwood University Church. And we want you to know that we love you and we wish you a very happy birthday. This past week, I took a walk through our Family Life Center and it's about 90% complete. To God be the glory, great things he has done. As we head into the home stretch, as our ribbon cutting will be Sabbath, February the 24th, in addition to your tithe and combined budget, I would like you to especially remember the Restoration 40 Project with our Family Life Center. 
Let's give, let's sacrifice. Remember, what we do on the front end, we will be blessed on the back end. Thank you for your prayers. I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday evening. May God bless you, and may God bless the Oakwood University Church. Oh, praise the Lord. Now, Sister Verdun is one of my favorites. She actually comes to AY anytime I hold AY. And I did not know that Sister Verdun was 89 years young last week when she was at AY because I know there's some people who ain't coming outside when it's cold to support the young people. But she was there, she enjoyed the movie, she, she gave us her thoughts, and I always appreciate it. And I, when someone told me this week that she was turning 90 years old, I said, ain't the Lord good? I hope my wife grows to be that fine at 90 years old. Can I get an amen, somebody? Oh, come on, that's all right, that's all right. Now, I was told that she has a number of family who have driven all or fl flown in from all over, New York, Georgia, Atlanta, all over these places. If you are here, Sister Verdun, I want you and your family to please stand so that we can honor you and just praise the Lord for you today. There they are in the back, my left, your right. A faithful service to the Lord. We love you. Come by the office this week, and I'm sure we have a special gift for you. Now I want to invite our student president. I call him Mr. President when I see him, Mr. Andrew Taylor, our United Student Movement president, with a greeting today. Happy Sabbath, church. Oh, let me try that one more time. Happy Sabbath, Oakwood University Church. I'm so glad to be here with you all this morning. I just want to let you know there's a saying that I came across this week, and it says, my good days outweigh my bad days, and therefore I will not complain. Is anybody not going to complain today and enjoy the Sabbath that the Lord has given us on this Oakwood University Sabbath day? I want to welcome you all. My name is Andrew Taylor. I'm the United Student Movement president for this school year and i'm so thankful for it i'd like to welcome our administration thank you all for what you do every single day for us the oakwood university um church staff pastor bolden right behind me thank you so much for all that you do um and i would like to welcome our students to church today thank you so much for coming by and worshiping with us and here you go <laughs> well praise the lord come on let's just praise god for andrew and his awesome leadership here on our campus. I want to let you know tonight uh, that at 9 p.m., what time, everyone? 9 p.m. to 5 a.m., we will be having a special all-night prayer meeting. Oh, come on. I thought I would have had a church who believes in prayer. We want to invite you out. Sister Dingo May, where are you, Sister Dingo May? Are you here? She might be actually in the room praying. She prays with the, uh, the prayer warriors doing service. But they will be meeting in the Mosley Complex at 9 p.m. We want to ask that you join us. If you can't be there for the whole time from 9 to 5 a.m., please just join us for at least one hour or two hours of your time to join us praying for our church, praying for health, praying for provision, praying for our marriages. We're going to be praying for everything uh, during that time of 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. And if you would like more information, please see Sister Dingle May after service. I'm sure she will be in the church office to my left to your to my right to your left also i just want to put out a plug that tonight we will be having a y m i still have to get used to saying that not a y s a y m with our young people uh it will be held in our primary room south to my right to your left at 4 30 so please join us for that i promise you you will be blessed now we were told we got a special and uh request this week from a student and I'm hoping that she's here because she sent a letter and she wanted us to make sure that we lift up her birthday today. Her name is Taylor Johnson. She's a student at Oakwood University and she turned 22 years old. Here she is. Can we say happy birthday to her today church family? Praise God for 22 years of life. Amen. We also have another birthday. Deacon Tom Ranchu Ranchano turned 48 years young. I heard that he would be to my right. There you are. Come on, won't you stand, brother? You look good. You're in your prime. Praise God for 48 years of life. And we have one more birthday today. Today is DJ's birthday. Mr. Dennis, or tomorrow, or one of these days. Monday, hallelujah. He turns 30, the big three O's. DJ, won't you stand? Come on, amen. Hallelujah. 
and he's about to be a daddy. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Now, I see Brother Roddy over there smiling. He's glowing about because I was told two of his children are here. We want to invite Katie and Jeremy to please stand and welcome you home today. Come on, come on, come on. Stand on your feet. Be obedient today. Hallelujah. So good to see you. Welcome back home. And uh, we're so happy that you have joined us for worship this morning. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm ready to worship the Lord for the great things that he has done for me. And I know he's done great things for you. If you are visiting Oakwood uh, for the first time today, we want to invite you to stand on your feet. We want to invite you to stand on your feet. We have a special gift for you. We want you to know that there's a gift in standing. Our greeters will be moving throughout the uh, pews to hand you a special gift on behalf of the church. Amen. Amen. Come on, greeters. Won't you move as we uh, pass out these gifts? In the gift, you will find a special envelope. And in the envelope, you'll find a card. Please fill out that card and give it back to one of our greeters and ushers at the end of service. And we'll be sure to get you a very special gift on behalf of the Oakwood University Church. Now, church family, we know we've been testing out some welcome songs. And this week, we got a new one for you. It's called Better. Look to your neighbor and say, Better. Tell your neighbor, it's looking better for you. So as you stand on your feet, we want you to join us in singing this song of praise, saying it's looking better. Won't you stand on your feet, greet your neighbor today, tell him it's good to see him. I'm glad that you're here, and we're going to worship God for what he's done. Right here, everybody said, people come and... Hallelujah. 
Listen, we just came to say hallelujah to the Lord because I don't know about you, but I just praise him for three days off. Come on, somebody. I know the students are happy that they were delayed in their uh, coming back to school. You got some extra rest. I'm just thankful that God knows what we need. But I don't know about you, but the Bible says we should bless the Lord at all times. On off days and on days. On broke days and during surplus. That we should just bless the name of the Lord. And I'm just wondering if there's two or three people in the sanctuary who's saying despite what my situation looks like, despite what I've been going through, I've just come to give them glory today. So the song says hallelujah, salvation and glory to the Lord our God. We want you to lift that praise with us today. It's a simple song, we know you know it. Praise team, let's all start together right here. Sing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. Salvation and glory. Honor and power. Honor and power unto the Lord our God. Call somebody say it, for the Lord our God. Wonderful. He is wonderful. Let's take it up right here. Say it again. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Salvation. Salvation and glory. I'm gonna say honor and honor and power unto the Lord our God. For the Lord our God is mighty. For the
truly our God is wonderful, is he not? As we are here worshiping God, let us stand for our morning hymn, which is 598, Watch Ye Saints. Everyone on verse one, watch ye saints. Watch ye saints with our hands waiting. Load the powers. Keep your lamps, keep your lamps all trimmed and burning. Ready for your Lord's free. Lo, he comes, Lo. Sing it, Arkwood, low, low he comes, Jesus comes to reign victorious, low he comes, yes, Jesus. Everyone on verse 2, low the promise, low the promise, pardon sin and purchase favor. Blood wash robes and crowns of glory and crowns of glory. Haste to tell redemption story. at their base. Kingdoms at their base are crumbling. Our his chariot wheels. Tell, oh, tell of grace abounding. Of grace uh, while the seventh trump is sounding. The trump is sounding. these words and let's sing this verse very contemplatively. Nations. Nations wait, though proud and Christ is kingdom. Christ is kingdom. Hasten. Earth, her latest pangs is summing. It's his pangs is shout ye saints, shout ye saints. Your Lord is coming.
everyone's favorite verse, Sinners. Sinners come oh, while Christ is plea. Now for you, he's interceding. He's interceding. Haste their grace. Haste. And time diminished. Time diminished. Shall proclaim. The mystery is finished. Three finished. Lord. standing. It's prayer time and I was reminded this week. Remember when I first gave my life to the Lord, one of the first passages of scripture that I stumbled upon was in the book of Isaiah chapter 59. God says, surely the arm of the Lord is not too short to save, nor his ear too dull to hear. And in front of me, I have a list of prayer requests that I need this promise to be true. I'm encouraged, though, that the leaders of our church and our university thought it wise to say that no, we're not going to focus on finances at the beginning of the year not going to focus on, you know, what we can do for ourselves, but we're going to focus on prayer. And I'm so grateful and motivated that this church, that our university for the past few days and for a total of 40 days, will we've been committed to prayer and fasting. And I just believe we've committed to it because we know that if the Lord is not on our side, where, where will we be? Because the truth is, through many dangers, toils, and sma snares, and debts, and, and, and disagreements, and fights, God has always come through for this place called Oakwood. Because he's done it for us, I know that he can do it for our neighbors. Today I want to alert you to pray for Sister Ziola, Z Ziola Austin. Mr. Austin is in room 405, room 405 of Huntsville Hospital. And we need the church to pray. And I dare say we need some members, some elders, some deacons, even some pastors to visit. I want to pray for Sister Angie Hill. She had a stroke this week. And she's also in Huntsville Hospital. She's in room 838. Church family, we really we need to pray. We need to pray that God will prove his word true, that he is still a bomb in Gilead. Am I talking to somebody today? But my heart is heavy because I've bought into the myth that as a young person, I'm invincible. I can live forever, you know? I'm going to be all right. But there's a student, senior theology major, Matthew Adderley was rushed to the hospital last night at 3 a.m. because he's been battling, fighting, 
with cancer. Church family, I don't say this to offend anyone, but I just imagine if I found myself in that type of situation, I would not be asking those who don't believe in God's power to pray for me. But I would be calling individuals who I know know Jesus. Individuals who I know who knows that when they call on his name, things have to change. In church family, I don't know his mother. I don't even know Matthew. But I can imagine that Miss Keisha Brown would be on her face right now, praying that God would show up and show out. So today I pray and I'm begging that as you get on your knees to pray, as you come to the altar, as you sit, however you come for prayer, that you first would believe and that you would also remember Matthew, that God would use his life as a testimony and that God would use his ministry in a powerful way, that this moment in his life would be a pivot for what God does for him to bring others into this church and into his kingdom. Last but not least, Brother Stoddard, I got word that your wife, brother, he died. They're going to be burying him soon, and we want to pray for the Stoddard family. We want to thank Brother Stoddard for his faithfulness, even on the church organ today. Because where he could be at home mourning, he still came to the house of the Lord to serve. So those are our prayer requests, and I'm sure there are many more. We've all come into the house this morning with burdens, with pains, with aches, and with concerns. What I do know is that God is able. What I do know is that God wants to heal our need. So as you come forward today, please come believing that the God that we serve is able to turn any situation around. He just wants us to have the faith to believe that he can do it. So we're inviting you to come today. If you can't come for yourself, come for Matthew. Come for Sister Austin. Come for Sister Hill. Believing that God can and that he's going to do it for us. Come on, let's sing that song today. He promises that he will. seen fit to bring us here today to worship and to be reminded of the fact that the struggle we are in has a context. For the dragon was wroth with the woman and went out to make war with the remnant of a seed, those who kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. There is a context. 
the serpent from the very beginning deceived our first parents and they had a great fall and because of their fall God we are suffering today from sickness from struggles and and some of us even in a state of confusion but we're so grateful God for Genesis 3:15 for you promised to send a savior whose heels would be bruised but he would crush the head of the serpent and because of this Lord we have hope that you put enmity between us and the devil so if we want to be saved we can be saved if we want to resist we can resist him for he is our enemy and so today we know the battle is fixed and but we can be victorious in spite of the fall we can worship and walk with you as Enoch walked with you so God give us whatever it takes to walk with you especially in these crucial moments of earth history when things seem to be out of control and unhinged we know that you're with us so God give us the humility of Moses who did not retaliate against the children of Israel who conspired against him but he stood his ground his faith remain stood fast in you so those who God like the humility we pray that you would create a spirit of humility so that we can worship you and not only that father we need faith some of our faith or some of the members here today faith is weak but God give us the faith we need to meet the challenges and the crises of these final moments in earth's history. Strengthen our faith, Lord, so that we, like Abraham, can leave acquaintances that don't mean us any good, evil influences, and seek a city that has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We are pilgrims. And we thank you for this pilgrimage because we know that it's going to culminate and the earth made new. For John says, I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem descended from heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. This world will not last always. And so we lift our eyes and our minds and our hearts today, God, above the struggles and the cares of this life. We pray for those who are ill especially Matthew Adderley, Lord, who's attempting to graduate this year, but now he's ill. But Lord, we know that you can heal the sick when you were here on this earth. You spent a lot of time healing the sick, casting out demons. We trust in that power today. You are the same yesterday, today, forevermore, and we believe that you can do the same today. Visit Matthew's room comfort and console touch him with your healing power and we pray for all of those who are sick for we have the hope that one day we will eat from the tree of life and there will be no more sickness no more tears for the former things would have passed away and so we pray for this waiting congregation today God we pray that you will remove anything from our minds the worries the bills that are not paid, the relationships that are gone bad, the pen and divorce, the children that are in trouble. Remove all of these things from our minds so that we can hear your word from your manservant, Dr. Pollard. God, take him high today. Give him words straight from the throne room of grace that would uplift our spirit. And when we leave here today, may we say it was good to have been there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I should return. Come on, believe it today. Say it. I will be with you. I will. Try. 
Jesus. of tithing has been taught by parents to children in various unique and interesting ways. One such story was met with a profound response that challenged the parent. A father takes his son aside and explains that God is the source of our health, our strength, and our energy. He blesses us with everything we have and gives us work to be able to sustain life. And one of the many ways that we worship him is by returning a faithful tithe and offering. To this, the son replied, how do we do that? The father explained that we return to God one-tenth of all that we earn. Of course, the seven-year-old boy was still not clear. The father takes out 10 $1 bills and he counts them. Just trust me, I got $10. <laughs> and he put, counts them out, and he says, if this is all we earned, nine would be for us, and one would be for God. So the boy, finally understanding, the son points to the $9 and says, this is for us. And the father replied, yes. And then points to the $1 and said, this is for God. And he says, yes, feeling good that he had accomplished the task that he had set out to achieve. But after a moment, he looked at his son's face and realized that he was still in deep thought, looking at that $1 bill. So he asked the son, what's wrong? To this, the son replied, is that all God gets? Is that all God gets? Factored into the son's simple question was life and strength and health and shelter and food and clothes and employment. So Ms. Cotton and I would just like to pose a question from a seven-year-old to the church today as we prepare to give our return our offering and a free return our tithe and a free will offering. Is that all? God gets. Deacons, please rise as we receive the morning's tithe and offering. Please bow your heads. God, all good things come from you. Your blessings are not limited by what the world has to offer, but you generously give to us from heaven's infinite economy. You simply ask that we return tithe and offering and grant us the choice to keep the lion's share. 
We thank you for the opportunity to return a token, and we praise you continuously. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. <laughs> oh, good. Happy New Year. I, this is my first time seeing you all this year. Happy New Year. Are we awake out there? Good morning, everybody. Happy Sabbath. <laughs> Earlier this week, we lost uh, one of the songwriting treasures of the Church of, of, of uh, God, Edwin Hawkins. And I was reading a Facebook post by the great Richard Smallwood, and he was talking about how Edwin had been such an influence on his music. And uh, Richard Smallwood has been a huge influence on me and my music. And it occurred to me that this continuum is something that God designed, not just in music, but here in education. That's what Oakwood is. It's passing down of legacy, of information, of the, the power of salvation from one generation to another. So I thought it only fitting today uh, to just take a second to celebrate and remember this, this great legend, this great songwriter. And, uh, and do a song that you might remember. It's an old song. Some of you may have heard it before, but it goes a little bit like this. Oh, happy day. Mm -hmm. Oh, happy day. Yeah. When Jesus washed. Anybody glad he washed your sins away today? Oh, oh, oh when he washed. When Jesus washed, hey, wash my sins away. Oh, happy, oh, happy day. I knew you knew it. Oh, happy day. Oh, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, I'm so glad that he washed, yeah, yeah, yeah. he washed my sins away. Sing it one more time. Oh, happy day. Oh, happy day. That it was a happy day when Jesus washed. When Jesus washed, I'm so glad He washed. Hey, He washed my sins away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He taught me how. He taught me. How. He taught me how to watch, fight, and pray. Oh, 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 oh. watch, fight, and pray. Hey, yes, it is. Fight and pray. Every joy is
anybody remember the day? You know, I was thinking, I lost my brother-in-law earlier last week, and we talked about the day being a happy day where Jesus washed our sins away, but I was thinking about this song, and there's another happy day coming. There's another happy day coming. on this legacy and that's what we try to do here at the Oakwood University Church when it comes to our children and our grandchildren and our great-grandchildren we seek to pass down a legacy so they too can get to know the Jesus that we know they too can have the experience that we have with him and they too can learn to look forward to that happy day when Jesus not only washes our, washes our sins away but when he's coming back to take us home so thank you John thank you as we transition into our children's story we want to invite our children to assemble in the back there are some green receptacles and they will be coming through the aisle asking you to support Christian education they're going to be asking you to give towards Oakwood Elementary School, Oakwood Middle School, and Oakwood Academy. It's there they will discover and continue to learn and build a relationship with Jesus Christ. It's there they will discover who they are. It's there they will discover who God is. And it's there they will discover God's plan for their life. Every week we sing, I'm a promise, I'm a possibility, but it's at Oakwood Academy, Oakwood Elementary, Oakwood Middle School, where they discover the possibilities that God has in store for them. And so as they are coming, and as you are giving, God will bless you as you bless our children. We want to remind those of you watching, send your videos of your children, your grandchildren singing I'm a Promise, I'm a Possibility to videos at OUCSDA.org. Videos at OUCSDA.org. So as they're coming, we're going to sing our children's song, I'm a Promise, I'm a Possibility. I am a promise. I am a possibility, I am a promise, with a capital P. I am a great big bundle of potentiality, and I am learning to hear God's voice, and I am trying 
to make the right choice. I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. Let's try that again. I am a promise. I'm a possibility. I am a promise. A promise with a capital P. I'm a great big bundle. I've got potentiality. And I am learning just to hear God's voice. And I am trying. I'm trying just to make the right choice. I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. As the children are coming, we want you to sit on the carpet. We have something very special in store for you, but we want you to sit on the carpet and then turn around and face me, okay? So go ahead and sit on the carpet, turn around and face me. And I am learning to hear God's voice and I am trying. I'm trying just to make the right choice. I'm a promise to be anything. I am a promise to be anything. Yes, I'm a promise to be anything God wants me to be. All right, all right. So I need everybody to sit on the carpet and then turn around and face me. All right, let's get some help. All right, everybody sit on the carpet. All right, there's some room right over there. Yes, have a seat and then turn around and face me. Can everybody see me? All right, good. Well, good morning, boys and girls. All right, I have somebody very special who I want to introduce to you. And he is going to introduce our story. And so after three, I want you to say, good morning, Uncle David. All right, you ready? One, two, three. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you doing this morning? It's a Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, boys and girls. Look, we've got a special treat for you on today. Now, uh, the Office of Spiritual Life, under the direction of our senior chaplain, Andrew Pelleggi, and our ch associate chaplain, Chaplain Mann, we're so glad to uh, um, let you know that on today, we go out and we do some great things for the community. We go out and we impact uh, the communities through mission and all types of opportunities. So we would like to make a difference in the lives of others. One of the things that we do is we have a ministry that we go around and this particular ministry engages our boys and girls in the community. So I want to invite Chapel Man, Chaplain Man, to come and talk to us a little bit about all this wonderful puppet ministry that we do around the community. Good morning, boys and girls. Well, today I have a special story for you, and I brought some of my friends to help me tell the story. Now, how many of you all know what this is? It's, I know what it is. I know what it is. Call on me. Call on me. Call on you? Yes. Yes. Okay. James, what is this? Um, uh, uh, oh, I had it. I had it. It's gone. Hold on. Wait a minute. Um, uh, I, I know it's on the tip of okay, my guys, tongue. Okay, guys, can you help James out? Tell him what it is. It's a light bulb. It's, oh, I, I knew that. It's a light bulb. I knew that. I knew that. It's a light yeah, bulb. Yeah, I was now, gonna say that. James, something's wrong with my light bulb. It doesn't work. I'm, uh, uh, why? Why it don't? Why it don't work? It, I, don't, do, I don't. Do you? Do you have it? Uh, is it broken? No, I don't think it's broken. I think it doesn't work because it's not plugged. in. In. Oh, I knew that. Okay, so we just got to plug it in and it'll work. Yeah, Yeah, you got to plug it in. You know, God wants us to be like a light bulb. No, okay. Uh, see, see, I have a problem with that because, what? um, you see, I'm, I'm a boy 
And I enjoy being a boy. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about turning you into a light bulb. Oh. God wants us to be like a light bulb. Oh, well, see, I can do that. I can do that. Yes, can do you that. can. You can do that by being nice and being kind okay. and listening to your parents. When you do that, you plug into Jesus oh. and he helps you to be a light. Okay. That's not that hard. Okay. So, um, yeah, I can do that. I can do that. That shouldn't be that problem. Yes. Now, you know, I think there's a song that talks about being a light. <gasps> I know what you're talking about. Do you? Can you sing oh, that? Can you sing that song I, for I me mean, and my um, friends? I, I don't like singing by myself. You know what I'm saying? Because okay. Well, well can you so get your people. friend? Can you get your well, friend? I, yeah, I got friends. Hold on. Okay, guys, come on, come on. Okay. Are you ready? All right. Are you ready for their special song? All right. Philippians 2, 14 to 16. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God, without fault, in a warped or crooked generation, then you will shine among them like stars in the sky, as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run or labor in vain.
and girls, are you gonna let your light shine? Yes, let's give a round of applause for our puppeteers. Stand up. All right, can I have a boy pray? And let's see if one of our friends will pray. Y'all sit down. All right. Hey, James, you want to pray for us? As a matter of fact, I do. All right. Are you going to be a light? I am going to try. I am going to try to be plugged into Jesus at all times. Hallelujah. All right. Who wants to pray for me? Anybody want to pray for me? Okay. Right here in the green. Come on. All right. James, you pray first, and then this beautiful young lady is going to pray next. All right? All right. All right. All right everybody, bow your heads. Close your eyes. Okay. You right there, close your eyes. All right, let's go. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so very much for letting us all come to church today. Help us to have a great rest of the day. Help us to get a lot from the sermon. And um, most important of all, let us always stay connected to you, plugged in like a light bulb. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. Amen. All right, boys and girls, have a happy Sabbath. All right, James. All right, friends, let's go. continue our celebration of Jesus Christ by standing as we read together Philippians 2 verses 2 through 5. Please stand as we read the Word of God. We will be reading from the New King James Version again Philippians 2 verses 2 through 5. Therefore if there is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, fulfill my joy by, by being, being like-minded, like having the same love, being of one accord, of one, one mind, mind letting nothing, nothing be done, done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for, for the, the interests interest of, of others. others. Let this mind be in you. Let this mind be in you. Let, Let this, this mind, mind be, be in us, us which, which was, was also in Christ, Christ Jesus. Jesus. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Happy Sabbath. It is my pleasure to introduce the 11th president of Oakwood University, Dr. Leslie Nelson Pollard. Since President Pollard was 16 years old, God has been preparing him for such a time as this. With education and experience for his service and calling to Oakwood University. Because of his thirst for knowledge and understanding, Dr. Pollard has earned five degrees starting right here at Oakwood University with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in Religion and Theology, a Master of Divinity degree from Andrews University Theological Seminary, Doctor of Ministry in Preaching and Worship from Claremont 
School of Theology, Master of Business Administration from the La Sierra University Business School in Organizational Management. And to culminate his academic pursuits, he earned the Doctor of Philosophy in New Testament Language and Literature. With a specialty in apocalyptic literature, Dr. Pollard is the first African American to earn a PhD in academic content theology from Andrews University Theological Seminary. Dr. Pollard entered to learn at Oakwood in 1978, and for the last 40 years, he has given his life to Christian education, leadership, and serving others as a dedicated husband and father, productive and engaged scholar and lifelong professor, a lifelong learner and professor, a presenter, facilitator, pastor, youth pastor, and evangelist, university chaplain, healthcare program administrator, educational administrator, editor, published author, board member, and now president of Oakwood University. Under Dr. Pollard's leadership, Oakwood U University has enjoyed the favor of God in significant milestones, including, and just some of them, a, co a quantified scoring of 98.9 on its last SAC COC accreditation visit. Amen. The largest individual and corporate fundraising donations and the largest grant award in the institution's history. A reinvestment into campus industries as sources of non-tuition revenue. $25 million of new construction and renovation of campus buildings. The creation and recognition of a nationally recognized Healthy Campus 2020 Wellness Initiative, a landmark study of young adult spirituality called Life Core, three gold medals in the 2012 World Games, World Choir Games, and most recently the Aeolians named as the 2017 Choir of the World, and Dr. Ferdinand, outstanding conductor. And there are so many more blessings, praise God. But after all President Pollard's degrees and multiple leadership positions and all his accomplishments and travels from Argentina to Zimbabwe, the most impressive thing about Dr. Leslie N. Pollard is his personal mission statement that reflects his commitment to serve God and humanity, which says in part, my mission is to serve my God, my family, my community, and humanity with every resource that God has given me. I will serve as many as I can for as long as I can until God calls me to my rest. That's beautiful. Joining Dr. Pollard today is his Oakwood College sweetheart and lifelong partner, Dr. Prudence LaBeach Pollard. Dr. Prudence serves as Vice President for Research and Faculty Development at Oakwood University. Dr. Prudence, would you please stand? The Pollards also have two wonderful daughters, Kristen and Karen, and two sons-in-law, Demetrius and Damod, a friend of my sons, and who are all graduates of Oakwood University. It keeps going. And the two grandchildren who one day will come to Oakwood, Genesis and Eden, would you all stand? Thank you. In closing, thank you, Dr. Pollard. Thank you for your commitment to Christian education and supporting students. I've observed you and Prudence for years. Since, uh, since our children were young in Riverside, California, Kansas Avenue, as we served together, um, you have both shared your resources, gifts, and knowledge has been something you and Prudence have so freely given to others. As president, Thank you for making donor wishes and fundraising a priority in order to preserve and advance the mission of our beloved Oakwood University. And not just asking others to give, but thank you for leading by example in philanthropy. Together, you and Dr. Prudence have generously given back to your alma mater to support students and their success, and we thank you. After the special music by our, by our 2017 World Choir, uh, the Aeolians, please welcome in prayer President Leslie Ann Pollard. Amen. 
after a wonderful weekend on last weekend, we thought it fit to come back to Oakwood this week and just kind of reflect on the topic, a healthy choir. So we have not rehearsed all week. Um, we spent two hours on Thursday and another two hours on Friday with Pastor Richard Martin, a former alien who poured into us. The next song we want to sing um, is a song when I came to Oakwood in 1997 that became kind of like the road march song for the, that version of the aliens. And um, many musical scholars, if I can include myself in that group, we lament the fact that in this hymn, most hymnals have omitted this original fourth verse. And can I just share that fourth verse with you? This verse says, Oh, that day when freed from sinning, I shall see thy lovely face, clothed then in blood-washed linen, how I'll sing thy sovereign grace. Come, my Lord, and no longer tarry. Take my ransomed soul away. Send thy angels now to carry me to realms of an endless day. You know this song very well, and we hope it ministers you in a new and exciting way. Really think of the words and ask yourself the question, are you prone to wonder?
Amen. Wow. Wow. I, I don't know if I have a favorite song, but that's among my three favorite Aeolian songs. So thank you so very much. Thank you, Dr. Ferdinand. Thank you, Aeolians. I had the pleasure of being with the Aeolians. I see some of them yawning. I had the pleasure of being with the Aeolians last week in Orlando, Florida. And um, a furious pace. The only way to describe it, a furious pace, but it was a magnificent community event. The Martin Luther King Jr. celebration for the city of Orlando at which the mayor attended in the Oakwood University Aeolians as well as the Orlando Community Orchestra performed and it was phenomenal. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. What a blessing to be in the house of God today. Can you say amen? And since I haven't seen you in a little while, I want to say Happy New Year. Come on, you can do better than that. Happy New Year. Every day that we awaken is a good day. Can you say amen? Um, I heard uh, Dr. Al Sharpton say one day, he said people got the nerve to complain that today is a bad day because it's a cold day or it's a hot day. He said, no, no, every day that we are here is a good day. It's a good hot day. It's a good cold day, but it's a good day, and I'm grateful for that. So it's a great day to be alive, and I'm very grateful. I have had an, a phenomenal December and January, and it'll slow down a little bit in February. 
But after Christmas, and we had a wonderful Christmas, our family together, it was wonderful. My daughter Karen organized a gingerbread baking contest for the three households. And we had neutral judges. I just, I have to say that, Dr. Wilson, neutral judges. Um, we all built our houses, and the, the judges were, were to pick which was the best of the three houses. And uh, Genesis was a judge, and Eden was a judge. Kurt, they picked grandpa and grandmas. Yes, of course they did. They did. They did. It was neutral. It was neutral all the way. It was neutral. And then, of course, she wanted me to buy her something from Toys R Us, but that, that's okay. So she's, she's learning early, learning early. Uh, and, 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 of course, since then, it's just been a, a whirlwind. Uh, I bring you greetings, of course, from your brothers and sisters in the West Jamaica Conference, where I did camp meeting for the West Jamaica Conference, and, of course, visited with my friends from NCU, Northern Caribbean University, our sister institution. And, of course, they say welcome as well. Had wonderful food. Tried to be a vegetarian. Tried to be a vegetarian. I hung in there, hung in there, hung in there as best I could. Aki and Saltfish, I, oh, as best I could. And uh, had a wonderful time. And after that, spent some time, I'm so sorry to hear, but I spent some time there just taking a few days of vacation and rest, and that was wonderful. And I called Dr. Cowick Wilson, our new provost, and uh, he told me it was like, uh, like 10 degrees or something. And I groaned as I was snorkeling. And, um, and I did, I groaned, I groaned. Um, and then, of course, after that, let me just walk you through what, what this month has been like, and then we're going to get right into the Word of God. After that, of course, we attended the uh, Adventist University of Health Sciences inauguration there with the new president, Dr. Edwin Hernandez. He sends his greetings as well down in Orlando, Florida, and our Oakwood students who work in the Florida hospital system are doing exceptionally well, and they make us proud. They make us so very proud. From both the schools of nursing and business, uh, they just make us proud, they do. Um, immediately after that, of course, Oakwood Day in Orlando, which was wonderful, and, um, and then, of course, the Aeolian event, after which last week I spent, it was cold, was it cold last week? Was it cold last week? A little bit? I'm sorry. Just a little? A tiny bit, yeah. Well, I would have invited you, Pastor Goodrich, to take this uh, event, but I, I had to be in Trinidad. It's terrible. <laughs> University of the Southern Caribbean, they had their site visit, and I was one of the visitors along with an international team. We did a wonderful job. And Jason, we met every day. I thought about your family every day because every meeting was held in the Leslie Ferdinand boardroom at USC, named after his dad, and that was wonderful. So thank you so very much. And then, of course, we're back, and now we've got a full week this week, tomorrow night. I just want you to know, so it's going to slow down a little bit, but tomorrow night I meet with the regional presidents. We have uh, some items that we're taking care of that I think are going to really benefit Oakwood. And then, of course, I have a GC event in which... Three of us, Dr. Richard Hart, um, Dr. Andrea Luxton, and yours truly, will be doing some team training for the GC office personnel around cross-cultural communication, and that's very important. And because we lead by example, I want to introduce you to one of our newest employees. Um, those who were on the search committee know him, know he's here, a graduate of Oakwood University. You heard him this morning. Um, just speak briefly. Um, um, he, I tried to get him during my first term as president here, but I couldn't because he was so engaged in what he was doing in the Southeastern Conference. But, but he and his wife, Dee, have both joined us here at Oakwood University, and we're very grateful to announce the new position that we've appointed. In order to continue to offer Oakwood, we will be true to our historic calling, and we will grow more and more diverse as we go through the following years. And so I'd like to, of course, welcome the new special assistant to the president, for diversity and inclusion, Elder Isak Ibarra. And Dee, would you stand please? Dee is serving as Dean of Women in Wade Hall. And we're very grateful that they are joining us, these Oakwood graduates. Uh, you, he, he talked a little bit about his Cuban accent, <laughs> a little bit, but you understood him, did you not? You did, so thank you so very much for that. And of course, uh, last week, uh, Ms. Wilson and I, and thank you for the wonderful introduction, we had the privilege of making some fundraising visits 
uh, as we prepare for our Health and Wellness Center campaign, and it was wonderful working with her as we work with donors about how they can partner with Oakwood University and bless the institution. So thank you so much, and thank you for the warm words. Ms. Wilson, she and her husband have meant much to us, as <clears throat> much to us as we have um, as we have matriculated through the years. They were our pastor and first lady at Kansas Avenue. And I could tell you some stories at a heart touchers as how they ministered to our family. Remember, Karen, when you had your car accident and uh, she had a rollover. And when I get to the hospital, the first person I see is Pastor Jesse Wilson, Tim. I don't know how he found out, but he was there. And I saw what members experience when someone is there when you're scared, right? You don't know what's going to happen. So that was wonderful, and I've always remembered that. So with that, with that in mind and, and those and other things, I'm very grateful for the work that we are doing here at Oakwood University. We continue to push forward, push the envelope to grow this institution, to position it so that it will be a sterling success, so that when my grandchild, Genesis, who will be in the class of 2032, the freshman class, See her? See her right there? Hit her with the camera, uh, cameraman. Earn your... See, she's right there? Yeah, class of 2032. Come on, save me. Put your hands together, everybody. Next to your grandchild. Isn't that the most beautiful grandchild you've ever seen? Next to yours. Next to yours. Next to yours. Okay. Um, I've been thinking lately um, about the message for today. So let, let's get right into it. Um, and, and it came to me, actually, um, because each of the last two years, we've been blessed here at Oakwood University to have a donor fund a, a very special event called our Biblical Foundations event. And the Biblical Foundations event has been wonderful. It has been um, a time when we have retreated from the campus and focused on what makes an Oakwood education unique. That's what we've done. And uh, people tease us about it because we've done it aboard a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. But the donor's paying for it. Come on, say amen, somebody. So it's not Oakwood University money. And if it was, that would be okay. <laughs> um, but it's actually donor money uh, in which we get to take 50 to 60 faculty uh, and focus on the biblical foundations for what we're doing. And so each year we've been doing that. Now, when we did this last one in May of 2017, I remember, uh, and, and here's how it works. So when we're at sea, we're doing intensives. That's the way it works. So when we're at sea, then when we're in port, we give everybody an opportunity to go around and to do tours and all those other things. So this day we were doing a tour. And I, we were returning from the tour, and, and I don't know why it just jumped out at me. I had probably seen it and not noticed it. You've had those experiences. So I'm walking up the gangplank, and then as I'm getting there, I see a sign, and the sign has three words on it. Mind your head. <laughs> Mind your head. Now, I, I thought about this. I thought this, first of all, I thought I hadn't heard that since I was a little boy because the older people down south used to say that. You need to mind your head, need to mind your ways, um, that kind of thing. I, I thought about that, and then I thought about the role that the mind plays in the Christian life and the role that Oakwood plays in cultivating the Christian mind. And so that's the title of our message this morning. Mind your head. The battle for your mind. Mind your head. Now, m mind your head. That, that's, um, it's kind of old-fashioned, isn't it? It's almost like old English, isn't it? It's, it's kind of old language, although we have equivalents today. We'll say, um, mind what you say, or we'll say, mind your own business. See, same idea. Mind, it means, it means um, that you will attend to, give heed to, observe, um, the, 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 the Breath of Life Quartet, the early original quartet, they used to sing on one of their first songs, you better mind how you walk, better mind what you're talking about, you better mind. 
Um, in other words, this sign that I saw that day said, was saying to me, don't do anything that will hurt your head. So, so mind your head because within your head is your mind and your mind is, is gifted territory. It is contested territory. It, it, there's a war in 1965. Um, Scholar Donald Gray Barnhouse wrote a book called The Invisible War, and he described what's called the battle for your mind, a battle that is vicious and intense and un... Is that right there, sitting between your ears, is a battlefield in which influences in society are at work to actually take your mind, to control it, um, your mind. See, you are not simply a higher form of computer, nor is your mind a higher level computer. But, 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 but within your mind is the ability to form perspective, a mind does not just have a view, it has a viewpoint on reality. And part of what we do in Christian education is to shape that viewpoint so that it aligns with God's viewpoint, with God's way of, of working in the world. It's a 24 hour a day battle in an invisible war. And everybody wants your mind. Advertisers want your mind. If ever there was a time for us to watch the mind, it's now. Did you know that in the United States, we're only 6% of the world's population, but 57% of all of the world's advertising is directed at American households. The United States, by far, is the largest advertising market in the world. A study in 2016 showed that more than $190 billion are spent in advertising in the United States. In fact, if you are studying psychology, there is a whole new branch of psychology called consumer psychology. Consumer psychologists. They assist advertisers in actually approaching ways to capture our minds. And a chief medium is television. Television. Because the average American household watches seven hours and 22 minutes of television a day. That's 51 plus hours a week. And consumer psychologists know this, and so they launch advertising intended to imprint and impress the mind, both consciously and subliminally. And commercial messages are around us every day. Look, look, at, look at how they work. They, 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 say, they say, if you buy this, this thing, if you buy this, you will be whole, you will be happy, you will be fulfilled, you will be admired, you will be honored, you will be praised, you will be liked. Whatever it is, it is always something outside of you that supplements you or meets some need that you have. Advertisers assault our minds. Politicians assault our minds. Every day, they're under assault. Did you know that? Government shutdown. DACA, yes. DACA, no. Border walls, which, by the way, I thought the Mexicans were going to pay for. Border walls. Russian collusion in election. Politics assaults our mind. Immigration promises. Politics and politicians assault our minds. The denigration of African countries in general and Haiti in particular. And let me just take a moment to say that at Oakwood University, we do not share this kind of vile assessment of these countries. For to speak about them is to speak about us.
You better wake up. And so we are honored to have served the sons and daughters of Haiti and other African countries for more than 120 years. And we are honored today to continue that service at Oakwood University. Tax reform, spending bills. Um, um, now that government is shut down, you, I hope you understand the, the imminent crisis that we are in. When the government was shut down in 2013, CNN reports that there were 850,000 federal employees who were furloughed. We are on the cusp of a crisis. Politics and politicians, they all assault our minds. Our minds. Satan assaults our mind. Now, when we say that, let me just say something here, and maybe I'll back up. I talked about politicians and politics. Let me give you another that we find that that's a, you know what else serves as an assault on our mind? Social media. <laughs> it does. Cyberbullying, uh, black Twitter. <laughs> I said black Twitter. Caustic assaults that demean and denigrate people. Um, recently, now I'm going to try to pronounce his name. His name is Kamath Palihapitiya. He's an Indian gentleman. He's now 41 years old. He's a venture capitalist, and he's a co-owner of the NBA's Golden State Warriors. But more important than that, he was an executive in Facebook, and now he has left Facebook. He was speaking recently to a group of Stanford University business students, and he had a scathing critique of what he used to do at Facebook. Here is what he said. He called everything that happens there a kind of fake brittle popularity that undermines, and I quote him, no civil, undermines civil discourse, there is no cooperation, there is mistruth and misinformation, and it's not an American problem. This is not about Russian ads, he says. This is a global problem. He said, here's how it works. Here's how digital addiction gets started. You get a short-term dopamine-driven feedback loop in which we, we, we post material, and then we are instantly rewarded with likes and hearts and followers. And there's no concern about whether or not what has been said is true or rational or reasonable or defensible. And here is what he says. Now, here's the big one. Here's the big one. He says, quote, you don't realize it, but you are being programmed. Social media. And so we need to be careful. If it's not just advertising, if it's not just politics, if it's not just social media assaulting our minds, then guess what else assaults our minds? Jesus called it in Matthew 13, 22, the cares of this life. That also assaults the mind. As you gather today, what's on your mind today? Is it making it from one day to the next? Is it that I haven't cleared? Is that, that what's on your mind today? What about your mother, your father? They're homesick. What about the loss of a loved one? We've heard about that. John and Helen and, 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 and the loss of a family member. Uh, Matthew, who is in the hospital battling cancer at 21, 22 years old. What's on your mind today? Is grief on your mind? Can you focus? I met students the other day, who's, uh, a student the other day, who told me that she's here, but she can't focus because her grandmother died. I remember one Agape Day, we were visiting an elementary school, and I come out uh, as we drive up to the elementary school on Agape Day, one of our students who's known for being bright-spirited and energetic, but, but he's out and he's just sobbing, he's sobbing. And so when we approach him, we say, tell, tell, us, tell us what's wrong, what, what, what happened? Did someone do something? He said, no, he had met an elementary student whose grandmother had died. And the little boy started crying when he was talking about his grandmother. And his grandmother, who had died six months ago, it re-triggered his grief again. And he could not contain himself. Grief, 
the cares of this life. All of these things are on our mind and they threaten to rob us of our peace. Uh, our, our joy is, is, is under assault. Our, our hope is under assault. Um, finances. Uh, those who tell us that we have no future, that nobody cares. Satan even says that 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 your mind is that 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 nobody cares, and Satan and God doesn't even know. Um, so, so so Satan himself is fighting for the mind. See, fighting for the mind. Um, you don't have to look very far in Scripture to see what Satan can do when, once he possesses a mind. Um, Christ wants the mind to be the center of conscious being, the mind to be the seat of reason, will, perception, and judgment. But if Satan can bind the mind, if he can do that, then he can have control of the entire being. I mean, look at, look at what Satan's mind bind can do in a person. All you've got to do is read the possession stories in the Bible. People who have been possessed by demons. Now, we should not get it twisted. Satan and his imps are fallen angels, but they still have all the power they had before they were fallen. The only thing that restrains them is the barrier of the word of God and the spirit of God. But one day when the angels pull back their wings, those protecting angels, they will be unleashed to demonstrate their fullest fury upon those who have not received the seal of God. That's the book of Revelation. But right now, in this present eon, they are working, and they still have all that power, except they're dedicated to evil purposes. And notice what happens. Once they bind a mind, you notice in the possession stories in the New Testament, you see a number of characteristics. The person is robbed of self-control, their natural functions. Notice, like, like, like when a person tries to speak, they try to speak, and then the demon speaks. Sometimes they have supernatural knowledge, like in Mark 1, 23 and 24. We know who you are. You are Jesus of Nazareth. There are times when they demonstrate, a person can demonstrate superhuman strength when their mind is bound by Satan. In Mark 4, 5, verses 4 and 5, a man was restrained with shackles and chains. But whenever they restrained him, your Bible says he broke the chains. And then... Probably the most dastardly effect of this mind bind by Satan is suicidal tendencies. Mark 9, 22. Notice what it said about him. It said that because the demon is in him, he casts himself into the fire and sometimes into the water. Now hear me now. Yes, there is pr depression that is biochemically produced in some persons and it can be treated with medication. That is not what scripture has in mind. What scripture is responding to is the fact that they are persons who have lost all will and self-control and Satan has binded, has, has bound their mind and that's what he's after. Nothing less than the total binding of the mind. But I'm so glad that in those same gospels we have good news. Satan was a strong man, but God sent a stronger man named Jesus. And that strong man could come and set the captives free, implant a new mind. It's almost surgical. It's transformational. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14 says, we have the mind of Christ. So guess what? God's great gift to believers, yes, it's justification. Yes, it's canceling out the old debt. Yes, it's all of that, but it's also the receipt of a new mind. Romans 12, 1 through 2. It says, do not be conformed to this age. Now, we have often applied this passage to external. To haircut. But the world in this passage is more than simply the way we present ourselves. The word translated world here is aeon. For those who've studied Greek, it's not cosmos, but it's aeon, meaning this age. Do not be conformed to this age. Wow. Now, this age represents thinking patterns that are hostile towards God. This age 
elevates what we call the sovereign self. The role of the self in setting moral norms and moral standards and ethical codes. The sovereign self. Self is king. Personal opinion is fiat. Individual preference is law. After all, if we're both consenting adults, whose business is it? That's the theory of sovereign self. If three women decide they want to marry one man, that's simply called big love. The world, do not be conformed to this world. It's a system of thinking, a way of relating to and dismissing spiritual things. This world represents a system of thought. It speaks to, in this text, all of the fallenness that we see today around us in films, in music, in art, in philosophy, in science. This world, in the words of a science fiction series, this world is an alien contamination zone. Um, I, I don't know, I don't want to mess anyone up, but there is a, 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 a series of movies called Transformers. And um, there's a planet from which these beings come called Cybertron. <laughs> and and the, the arch enemy is named Megatron. I know you've never watched any of this. You've never seen it. Um, and so watch now. The Transformers are declared illegal on Earth. But, but still they come and they're disguised and, 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 and they're called Decepticons. <laughs> These are evil Transformers who are still here. And, 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 but there's one who's trying to fight them. Um, he's trying to keep them away. He's trying to preserve Earth as, as a place of peace and, and non-dominion, non-domination. And, and, and his name is Optimus Prime. Yes. Some of you have seen this, haven't you? Um, yeah. And, 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 and he and his Autobots, um, they're, they're, their mission is to get, their mission is to get Megatron to leave the planet Earth alone because he sent Megatron a message saying uh, leave planet earth alone and know that I am coming for you now you got to see it to hear the the drama and all the stage effects and all of those kinds of things I know you've never watched any of this but 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 let me tell you what it reaches for what I think it's reaching for I think it's actually reaching for the great controversy it just doesn't know how to get there Marvel Comics, and, and, and they're, they're reaching for it, but they just don't know what the true content is. Well, one day, of course, now the earth is decimated, and they're all hiding from these evil Decepticons, and four little boys stumble into an alien contamination zone. But there's one there who protects them as the Decepticons begin to attack. There's one who protects them, and, and he's called Canopy. And so he rises up, and he shelters them. Oh, I heard the gospel when I saw that scene. Long ago, in a world created by God, a cosmic interloper invaded planet Earth, appeared in one form, but he was actually something else. See, I talked a little bit about mind-binding demons, so let's spend a moment on mind-blinding demons. These are the ones who present themselves in one way, but in fact, there's something else. Oh, I got Bible for this. Marvel not that Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You think they're your friends, but in fact, they're Decepticons. Delilah was a Decepticon. Saul was a Decepticon. Judas, a Decepticon. Your wild girlfriend is a Decepticon. 
Your ungodly boyfriend is a Decepticon. Your weed head friends are Decepticons. And one day, when you really see them, it may be too late because they will have destroyed you. That's why the Bible says, do not be conformed to this world. Satan is a transformer, but God is the transformer. And notice what the text says. It says, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. By the renewing of your mind. Be ye transformed. By the renewing of your mind so that those strongholds will be broken down. John had had a great childhood. He had a father who supported him and a mother who loved him. But it wasn't until he was about 12 that he noticed that dad and mom hardly talked to each other. And then when they did... It was usually shouting and accusing and blaming and stonewalling and fearful fighting. Then came the makeup phase and all was peace for a season. But the makeup phase was simply the buildup to the eruption phase again. You know, that's really what they tell us is the way the cycle of domestic and verbal abuse actually operates. You have an eruption, and then there is a makeup phase and a, a quietness and a gifting. And then, and for those who say, well, why didn't she just leave? But, but there's a makeup, and there are reasons to stay, and then another eruption, and the cycle begins over and over and over. And so that's what John experienced. And, 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 and then one day he heard from his cousin, not from his dad, but from his cousin, that his mom was living with someone else. He thought she was on vacation, but, but she was actually living with another gentleman. And something happened in John's 13-year-old mind. He said, Mother has left us. Daddy is all I have. And John and dad began to form a survivor's bond. And then something happened in John's thinking. He said that no woman would ever hurt him again. No woman would ever abandon him. He said, in his mind, you can't trust the opposite sex. You better drop them before they drop you. Five years later, John enrolls at Oakwood University. And in four years, he's been through a series of relationships, none of which quite Landed. Why? Because Satan had set up a stronghold in his mind, a stronghold of distrust, of suspicion, of insecurity. It, it set it up in his mind, and he himself did not know. See, but what Satan knows is that whatever gets your mind gets you. Now, may I quote the Bible? 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5. It says, For the weapons of our warfare are not fleshly, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So look at what God does now. He says, we're going to destroy strongholds. But what is a stronghold? What is a stronghold? First of all, a stronghold can be a personal philosophy. Now, why do we do biblical foundations work across the curriculum here at Oakwood University? We do it because every discipline contains the seeds of an anti-biblical worldview. 
And the purpose of an Oakwood education is to educate students not only for academic and career success, but also help them navigate the potholes, the hidden pop potholes that are in every discipline, whether it's psychology or history or biology or theology even. We are helping them to navigate and to surgically dissect every discipline with skill and competence so that the good that the discipline has to offer is embraced and the bad that is inherent in the discipline is rejected. And so, for instance, people say, some, say they look at me funny sometimes when I'm standing in meetings and conferences and they say, well, does your school teach evolution? Yes, it does. <laughs> it does. It does not advocate evolution. Because you are not educated if all you know is the creation story of Genesis 1-1. What was the purpose of an education? The education is to expose you, but to also now equip you to understand what the weaknesses are of evolutionary theory. Because after all, whatever creation theory you embrace, both of them requires faith. Do you know that? They require faith. Why? Because you weren't there when it was done. So they both require some measure, some modicum of faith. And so faith is the piece. And we begin now to show that, yes, but in creation science, there is a rationale for believing in intelligent design. Last summer, we sent a team of Oakwood faculty to a conference on creationism for, the further, for further tooling. See, a, a, a stronghold in the disciplines, there are strongholds. And part of what we are doing is educating so that people can have a sense of how students can know how to dissect and cut away the bad and to hold the good and then to build on it and to minister through that thing. So, so all of these are strongholds. Now, let me just read you some very quickly. Uh, strongholds in terms of philosophies. Materialism is a stronghold. Hedonism, meaning that I'm living for pleasure, is a stronghold. Darwinism is a stronghold. Secularism is a stronghold. Relativism is a stronghold. Masculinism is a stronghold. Feminism is a stronghold. Communism is a stronghold. Atheism is a stronghold. All of these different isms are mental strongholds that war against a knowledge of God. Now, a stronghold can also be a personal attitude, though. So let's bring it down from the philosophical and let's bring it down to the practical. It can be a personal attitude. Worry can be a stronghold. Some of our prayer sessions are nothing but, war, but, but worry sessions in disguise. <laughs> Distrust can be a stronghold. Skepticism can be a stronghold. Watch this one now. Negativity can be a stronghold for some people. Toxic negativity. Um, seeking the approval of other people can be a stronghold. Anything that you make an idol in your life can be a stronghold. Fear, guilt, resentment, insecurity, all of these things can be strongholds of the mind. And the Bible is here to let us know that we are to tear them down. So how do we do that? Let me suggest to you there are three ways. Let me suggest to you there are three ways. Uh, first of all, Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says, set your, mind on, set your mind on things that are above and not on things that are below. So the first key to overthrowing strongholds and to securing the territory of your mind is to set your mind on the right things. Now, what I love about this text in Colossians chapter 3, verse 2, is that it actually gives you a choice. It says, set your mind. You can have, God gives us a choice. Decide a course and stay on it. Choose your thought food well. Nutritionists tell us that we, we have broadly three categories of food. Um, you have foods that are healthy and they nourish the brain. Then we have foods that are just empty calories. We call them junk food. They won't kill you, but they're not the best for you. And then, of course, we have toxic foods that will kill you, actually. 
So part of what we've got to do is choose the best thought food from what we watch on television to what we view on Sundays to where we go to the people we hang out with to the kinds of dis choose the best and feed your mind set your mind on things that are above and not on things below that's number one here's number two you want to secure your mind stop believing everything that people think <laughs> or say it's called critical thinking um, Mrs. Ellen G. White said that we should teach the youth to be thinkers and not reflectors of other men's thoughts now just on Martin Luther King Day I was on a plane as I mentioned to you traveling to the uh, to the to the site in Trinidad for the visit so on Martin Luther King Day I was aboard a plane and I took the opportunity on Martin Luther King Day to read his letter from a Birmingham jail how many of you have ever read that letter personally okay a masterpiece of reasoning of literature a masterpiece dr. Lee of showing the intersection between social justice and Christian faith it's a masterpiece but I loved one thing that he did as he was speaking to the southern white clergyman because that's who the letter is addressed to remember they had told dr. King while he was in jail that part of the problem is that he's not patient enough he needs to wait and dr. King had responded that there is nothing inherently redemptive in time nothing happens by waiting things happen by action but one of the one of the one of the one of the critics one of the clergymen had said that given how provocative the marches were that he wished to compliment Bo Connor and the Birmingham police force for the remarkable measure of restraint that they showed. <laughs> Excuse me, huh? And Dr. King responded. He said, maybe they should be commended. He said, but of course, the restraint was being shown in defense of an immoral cause. You got it? And so it was no restraint at all. It was simply evil with another face. Critical thinking. I'm glad that leaders like Dr. King didn't believe everything that people said and that everything that they thought. It was a masterpiece. And if you are going to secure your mind, you cannot believe everything that you hear people say or think. And just because, I'm talking to my students now, just because it's on the internet doesn't mean that it's true. You know, teachers are good at identifying the, the cut and paste research paper. Just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. Apply those gifts, those critical thoughts. What we do here, it's critical thinking. And it's important so that you can tease out arguments and then, of course, present the best in the, in the interest of truth. And then here's the last, I guess the last thing I want to say is that not only must you um, set your mind on things above and then stop believing what every other people say and think um, I'm gonna say something here that I hope helps everybody here stop believing everything that you think the Bible says the human heart is deceitful <laughs> I can't believe everything I think remember because the devil is a liar can you say amen and he lies to you and me. Not only does he lie about other people, he lies about ourselves. He tells you nobody loves you. That's not true. You can't believe that when you play that in your mind. Well, nobody loves me. Many people love you. Well, they're jealous of me. That's not true either. Because you know something? They ain't even thinking about you. <laughs> so that's not true either. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you see what I'm saying, don't you? Stop believing everything that you think. Um, Satan never tells us the entire story. He begins by the, uh, by, with a seed of doubt that he insinuates into the mind, and he begins to grow that thing and mature it. And one thing he is, he is a patient devil. He will take his time until he can get us to fall. But the good news is, guess what? 
God knows that these strongholds will come down. And just because I think them doesn't make them true. White supremacy is a stronghold. And so is black supremacy. These are strongholds. And I'm glad that God, though, he's a master at overthrowing strongholds. Can you say amen? I, I was just thinking, because it was a Martin Luther King weekend, I was thinking about the horrible damage that racism has done to our country. I was. And, of course, listening to the things coming out of the White House just reinforced that as I was flying. And I, there I was, I was just thinking, and I thought, you know something, God, but there's hope. There's hope even for racists. Did you know that? Um, I saw a wonderful special on George Wallace. I'm, I'm wrapping up. I saw a wonderful special on George Wallace. And, and George Wallace, uh, as you know, he was segregation today, segregation now, segregation forever in 1963. And then, of course, he was shot, an assassination attempt, had a conversion experience, went back and apologized to all the black citizens of Birmingham. And the black people forgave him and helped elect him governor. You should read that story. It's an amazing story. Um, but, 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 but here's what I figured out. Um, like racism, etc. God still loves the people who are the practitioners of this. He does. He does. He does. He loved Peter, didn't he? Didn't he love Peter? You, you remember what happened with Peter? P Peter was preaching on the day of Pentecost and, uh, 3,000 baptized, right, 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 Peter. And we think, oh, what a wonderful story. But you notice in Acts 10, he's still a racist. Cornelius, the vision, the sheep, the unclean animals, he's still a racist. So, so watch this now. There is hope for even the most deeply entrenched stronghold. God's grace will never surrender them until they finally say, well, I don't want that, and therefore they reject what God is offering. Um, did you ever meet somebody who didn't come to Oakwood because they believed some fable about Oakwood? Have you ever met anybody like that? I have, too. These are strongholds, and we need to help people see the truth. So with that, here is what I want to say. Set your mind on things above, not on things below. Stay with that now. Set your mind. Uh, advertise. Everybody's trying to set your mind. But you set your mind. The way you set an alarm clock, set your mind. The way you set a thermostat, set your mind. The way you set a table, set your mind. The, the way you set a GPS, set your mind. Because a set mind is a mind set. So set your mind on positivity. That's why the text that we read this morning said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, a self-surrendering mind, um, finding yourself in losing yourself, accepting yourself through rejecting self, filling yourself through emptying yourself. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Can I talk a little bit about that mind? That mind that was in Christ Jesus? Jesus, who received the unspotted worship of angels. Jesus, that mind that renounced all the sparkling privileges of royalty and took upon himself the form of a servant. That mind. Which mind? A mind so humble that he took upon himself the form of a slave. And for those of you who believe that the only Bible we should ever read is the King James Version, please note, in 1604 when it was commissioned, when they got to Philippians chapter 2 and they saw the Greek word doulos right at the height of the Atlantic slave trade, it was such an objectionable translation that they translated the word not slave but servant. But the word is slave. He took upon himself the form of a slave. Which mind? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. A mind that finds meaning in serving in the slums of Calcutta or in the ghettos of Liberty City. Which mind? This mind in which he saw himself reflected in the eyes of a leper. 
Which mind? This mind whose knees stooped low enough to be born in a stable amidst the smell of cow dung and biting flies. Which mind? This mind whose memory of celestial anthems did not deafen him to the heaving sobs of a grateful ex-prostitute. Which mind? This mind. This mind, let it be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, a mind whose rays of iridescent glory were intentionally concealed beneath a carpenter's smock. Which mind? This mind, whose former attitude did not, whose former altitude did not poison his redemptive altitude. Which mind? This mind, this mind of self-surrender, this mind which was also in Christ Jesus, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Now, I'm going to try this because I'm talking to young people. Oh, before I tried it. <laughs> I should have. But here we go. <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained. Spoken word. He beat Satan as a baby, not a maybe. Though unspeakably wise, he was wisely speechless. The race's biological seed to rescue Earth's title deed, hungry souls to feed, prisoners to be freed, because God decreed that the woman's seed would come and bleed and meet our deepest need. He came to bleed, we got freed, and he met the race's psychological need. Father for the orphan, hiding place for the homeless, anchor for the abused, storm the gates of hell with a rebel yell, it is finished. The devil is diminished. I turned in my SAG card, got tired of being an actor and an actress. I needed rest, so he's my sleep number mattress. His presence is a present that he offers to every peasant. Jesus, if you need health, he's a wonder drug. Jesus is a bottle of gold, takes just one drop to cure the sin-sick soul. Sustainer, creator, heaven's escalator, man's elevator, Satan's dominator, nobody greater, so praise him now, not later. Soar. Reaper, God's promise keeper, destroyed the grim reaper, mopped him up like a carpet sweeper. Not part, but the whole. Can't you feel him in your soul? So let's praise him in Espanol. Toro pararosa, adoramos a Dios. Jesus, Jesus is mi Rio de Dios. I love him. I love him more from my core. Do not snore. You woke, wake up. He's the winner for every sinner. Jehovah Jireh, like at Pentecost, still handing out fire. He wants to take you higher. He is the source and sustainer of all things. He is Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. Wise men came from the East because the baby wasn't a baby. He was beast. They came. Not by Facebook, but for a face-to-face -face look. <laughs> Weakness, not meekness. Powerful meekness with power in his hand. No weapon formed against him will ever stand, because he's the man. And in him we stand. His talk meets his walk, and his walk matches his talk. He took the cross, a death which was shame to mention. Through his death became a new invention. No need for Snapchat, because he's all that. He put his mind in you because he finds in you something he can unwind in you, a name that overcomes shame. Like when you first got hit and you wanted to quit, he says, no, stay in the game. Let this mind be in you and the rest will not be mystery. It will be history, his story, your story for his glory. Amen. President, preacher, poet. <laughs> Praise God for you, Dr. Pollard, today. I just wanted to give a few updates. Um, I misspoke earlier about Sister Austin. She is at Crestwood Hospital in room 405 at Crestwood Hospital. But I wanted to update you. This morning we prayed for Michael Adderley. Um, and I told you that this morning he was rushed to the hospital. We were told from his family that his tumor was bleeding and expanding. 
but God. I'm glad to announce that the doctors did another MRI this morning. And when they did the MRI, it was discovered that he was not bleeding. It's told the family, uh, we, we misread. But I don't know about you, but what's a misread to the doctor is a miracle to the church of God. And I'm just glad today to, to announce that the brother is doing well and that he's doing fine. Can we just give God some praise today? That what's a misread to the doctor is a miracle for Jesus and that he's still in the healing business. So church, I just come to encourage you today to keep on praying, to keep on trusting and keep on believing because what God said he would do will come to pass. Sister Ben Marshall, can you pray for us today? Let us rise as we have our benediction. I'm just so happy and blessed with a word and blessed with this update. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever.